Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Intercultural Spark on a very exciting morning as we look forward to the inauguration. And today we're talking about the idea of spark of creativity, like what's that creative spark that drives you? And so today our guest is artist Antonia Rupert, who literally has a creative spark uh, that drives her work to create beautiful artwork as well as uh, community-based projects, which she's going to talk to us about. So let's look at uh, Intercultural Cultural Spark. Welcome. Hi, Tony. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, Deanna. Thanks for having me. My oh, goodness. my pleasure. Well, and thank you as well. I did want to mention, so because we had been promoting this for a while, that we were really excited to have Lucky Church join us today. And Lucky is a, he's a global ambassador. He calls himself a badass, but he's like the nicest person ever. He does, um, he does the social media for Billy Porter. And Lucky, though, actually had like open heart surgery like two weeks ago. And according to his own uh, 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 manifestation, he said his voice sounds like Elmo. So, <laughs> so we are going to postpone uh, Lucky. Uh, and I'm so excited that you can be with us today, Tony, though, because you have some very exciting news to share about this new project, Invest in Austin. Can you tell us like what that's about and what that means for the world? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. You know what? I want to share a couple of things. Mm -hmm. First thing is that, yes, invest in Austin, uh, myself and uh, my team, which doesn't in include an eclectic Hi. group of people. <laughs> we have been chosen to bring um, public art mm -hmm. as well as programs to the Austin community on the west side of Chicago, the best side of Chicago. <laughs> I'm just gonna throw that right on out. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just excited because I grew up in this community. Mm -hmm. This is what I consider home, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, yeah, you grew up in the community and and now the whole process though, this was a city of Chicago uh, program. <laughs> And it was a competitive process. So, and actually I waved my hand because when Tony was talking about her team, I'm actually excited and honored. Thank you to be part of the team that's supporting uh, Tony on this. But how was that? You had to apply and get awarded this artist in residence. So how yes, did this, this, that this, work? This was a competitive, uh, a competitive award and, and kudos to all the artists who, you know, applied. Um, I found out about it last year and had to give a presentation. I sent in artwork, uh, chose three very different types of projects to uh, apply with, including uh, working with youth, uh, looking at uh, several different types of public works. I would love, 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 love to see when I go down uh, Chicago Avenue or what have you. So um, I'm just excited because, you know, even though it was a competitive process, one of the things I'm, I'm doing right now is trying to connect people, building some bridges, uh, learning about other artists who are, you know, in the community. So yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. And it feels like, you know, we're, we're sitting here, we're less than an hour away from the inauguration. There's been total craziness across the country and so much talk about bringing people together. Why do you think, I guess, do you connect to what's going on globally when you talk about bringing people together in community? Or Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm of the idea that what happens to one happens to all. And so mm -hmm. what happens in Austin is just as important as what's happening in, in Washington at this particular point. And it's as important as someone else, maybe someone else on the Internet. She's looking in, in her own town, her own city, wondering, oh, I wish I could do that in my own place. Well, look at us. We're doing it here in Chicago. And hopefully we can be um, we can connect and, and be catalysts for each other. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And actually talking about connecting, I did want to look at the um, 
there's a Facebook group. That's one of the ways that we're looking to try to get people involved so that people can join this Facebook group. Uh, and then also you've made yourself very accessible by even having a direct, <laughs> a direct email. Like yes. you can find Tony. There's no oh, yeah. <laughs> you can You can find me. I'm accessible. If you have questions, if you have ideas, I'm definitely available for the community. In fact, uh, we just found out we have, uh, I know I don't um, begrudge small beginnings. I just got an email that we have five young people who are excited. They want to work with us. They want to learn, you know, they want to grow their own artistic practice. And so I'm like, wow. And these are young people who, who live in the Austin community. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. You've learned a lot because not everyone who's watching may know about Austin. Why is why was Austin, I guess, designated as a community of need? What can you tell us about the neighborhood? Yes. In fact, Austin, in fact, Austin is the largest community in, in Chicago. It, it is. Right. I didn't know that. Yeah, some people may think, oh, Lakeview, or they they're, they think it's some, but it is the largest. And uh for many years, uh Austin, it it was um a community that was uh, left behind or or what have you. And so, uh, but that doesn't mean that there isn't um, um, wonderful, beautiful community building going on right there, even though maybe uh, co corporate, you know, uh, they're, they're, maybe corporations haven't per, per, um, looked at what's happening in Austin or, or looked mm -hmm. advantageously. Uh, the people is who that's who's making it, you know, the, the organizations, people on the front lines, that's who's getting in there day after day to make sure that um, things like violence isn't um, the norm for seven to 13 year olds, if you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we are actually now also going to be joined by Brianna. Uh, Brianna, we brought to Brianna. Actually, I'm going to bring you on, Brianna. Um, so uh there we go and i'm gonna Good morning here, actually i'm gonna put you guys you guys are the stars there we go i'm gonna go on the bottom i want you guys to shine uh on top so um you know we were talking about this so brianna is also someone i've worked with for years brianna is actually has been a virtual assistant for me but what's so funny when we look at about how you grow and evolve as a person I was getting links for you, Brianna, and I'm looking at your website and your YouTube channel mm -hmm. and shame on me. Cause I'm like, Whoa, like <laughs> <laughs> all this first. So I found it exciting to see all that you were doing when you look at the, the spark uh, mm -hmm. that's inside of us. So Tony and I were chatting about the project that she's doing in Austin mm -hmm. uh, that I want to tell you a little bit about, but then also wanted to hear from you in terms of what that spark is that, permeates the work that you do. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So let me show, since we were right just about doing that, what I like, and this goes to what I was saying about Brianna, all of a sudden finding out all these new things about you. When we look at someone, we actually have no idea like what, how expansive their ideas are and what's are in their head, including if you look at Tony with her amazing artwork. So can you tell us, Tony, what inspires you in the artwork that you create? You know what, one of the things that inspires me is um, using the situations that I have, using the people right around me. Much of my art is about people I know. You know, maybe I have an idea for something. And for example, uh, there there are these children, for example, um, so there, are, there are situations that may happen and the world may give us lemons and I will go and create lemonade out of it. I'll create a painting out of that story. That that's uh, where my, much of my inspiration comes from. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's a deep spirituality though. I've just heard you talk about a, a connection to God and religion as well. Do you feel that your creativity sparks from there as well? Oh, absolutely. My God. Um, I would not even, be an artist if it wasn't, I, I believe, for prayer. If it wasn't, you know, at, at one point, I recall when I wasn't, I was so down and 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 not even um, able to paint, bring color to canvas mm -hmm. because of some circumstances I was going, I was going through, and through a moment of prayer, through a moment of just giving it over, you know, um, 
I started with lines, just creating lines and then beautiful calligraphy. And then all of a sudden the color came back. And so, yes, absolutely. My faith is, is uh, number one when it comes to making sure that I'm bringing forth that, uh, that beauty. Mm -hmm. Well, and one thing you said that, that is, um, that I know I find challenging. I don't know if other people do as well, but when there's so much going on in the world or so much negativity, how do you stay focused on the positive? I know it feels sometimes like it can be paralyzing. And Brianna probably knows this because again, Brianna and I talk once a week or once every couple of weeks as, as my virtual assistant. And I know she's probably heard me say so many times where something will happen in the world. And I'll be like, well, nothing I'm doing actually really matters. Like it doesn't make a difference. Um, Brown is life and Brown, remind me what you tell me when I say that to get me out of that. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> first of all, I just tell you that you're wrong. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> I just believe, you know, everybody has a voice. Everybody has value to share with the world. And especially working with Deanna for these last couple of years now, I have seen how much how much joy she has in what she does and with what she does for her clients and the things that they're able to create. And we were even, you know, talking, you know, a couple of weeks ago about how, you know, she's just able to facilitate these individuals' dreams and she's able to connect dots that they might not have seen. So I basically, long story short, I tell her that she's wrong and that she always, <laughs> always has something valuable to say and to give to the world. Like she is <laughs> so I heard something interesting this morning. I caught Chris Brogan does a, a weekly morning show. He had a woman on this morning named Sarah Culberson and she was adopted and she found out when she went to search her birth family. This is like the fairy tale story. She was literally a princess. She found out. Yes. She found out that her family was royalty in Sierra Leone and, and she was a princess. And so she's completely embraced that identity. But she said something this morning because she was going to meet her family and she had this whole narrative in her head that they had abandoned her. And she said, you know what? I'm, she said, I'm going to be open, loving, and courageous. And I just, I loved that because if you approach things that way, especially with that openness, you never know where things will, will carry you or will take you. Exactly. Exactly. And also when you just approach life and your goals and dreams and, you know, the thing that you want to bring to this world with that kind of mentality, you know, like you said, you know, the world opens up to you. You're literally opening up you know, opportunities that you might not have even noticed if you were closed off to, you know, another way of thinking or like that kind of way of thinking. So I love that. But actually, I would be very upset if I found out I was a princess. <laughs> oh, she loved it. And she's beautiful. She's already beautiful. And they were making fun because she had been um, homecoming queen at her school and they were like, or like prom okay. queen. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to be completely superficial and throw this out and then I want to hear what you guys do. So, so when there's things like where you know, I, you, so so my job, the work I do with intercultural uh, intercultural talk is I feel like my job is to put gasoline or to put fuel on people's fire. So I find people who have a spark, but they just don't know how to manifest it. So like Brianna said, when you forget things, you have to stop. So for example, we were going to have Lucky today. So I got this shirt that I felt was like at least a little Billy Porter-ish since she does Billy Porter. <laughs> I wore my fanciest earrings for the inauguration, but every once in a while, this is where, and I want you guys do, I'm embarrassed to say this. I put on my rose colored glasses. <laughs> they literally are next to my computer. And if I'm completely stuck, I'm like, all right, just put them on. Let's go. <laughs> so my question to you, or if anyone's watching live, please feel free to share or ask questions. Um, I don't know who wants to go first. Tony, what do you do if you get stuck? Do you have any like external things that you just do to kind of jumpstart your mind? One of the things that I think about, I think about who I'm sharing with. Mm -hmm. I don't think that I take it off myself and I think about who am I sharing with? Mm -hmm. Who is this for? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, I want to, I want to pause and, and remember and give a shout out to Miriam. I don't know if she's watching, but my friend's daughter, her name is Miriam. And Maritza just went over the house on Sunday and she, this painting is behind me. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. The blue painting behind me, she gave that to me and hold on. It's right. Yeah. Right back. To her. <laughs> it's, it's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And she is one, 13 years old already serving wow. and giving and, 
And I'm thinking to myself, it's people just like that who's coming behind me. Now she's 13. I, I want to see where she's at 30, 40, you know, years from now. So I, I always think about who's coming behind me, who is doing, who am I doing this for? And, and that immediately, that pumps me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brianna, what about you? Yeah, I absolutely agree to, you know, think about your why that is such a huge driver and, you know, kind of keeping yourself grounded and centered and the in your path. And one other thing that I also do is I have a playlist. It's like a get pumped playlist. That I oh, okay. I'm feeling if I'm feeling like a little bit like kind of low on energy or I'm like, no, I, I just can't do it. So I have um, just like different songs that really get me pumped up, like, you know, Level Up by Sierra is one of the songs on there. And then I have some Queen on there. And it's just a whole variety of music that just it basically says you're awesome and you're on the right track. <laughs> and so that kind of gets me back grounded in the zone with what I'm here to be doing. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting for all three of us as well, as, as business owners, as people that are managing big projects, it's what are those things? So there's the big inspiration, how do you get your mindset ready? But also I think sometimes there's the, um, there's the structure that we put in place to get things done. So for example, I may set a meeting with a client because then I have to finish what I need to get done for them. Or I'll set a meeting with Brianna because she knows I, I have to like wag my tail and report that I've gotten work done. <laughs> Whatever works. I guess if I'm this old and I'm still doing it, it's, it's going to keep going. <laughs> and again, if you're listening live, feel free to, um, to share or ask questions as well. But I, from a business structure, because that's the thing too, even as an artist, Tony, I mean, there's the, there's the art of business. In fact, you and I met at Paul Klein's house, rest in peace, Paul just recently passed, but Paul talked about the business of art. And so it's about creativity, but what are some of the structures that you put in place to, to be able to support, you know, to kind of underlie the creativity? I think it's huge. One of the things I learned from Paul was it's all about relationships. As with anything, it's about relationships and it's it's about um, because connection is my one word for the 2021. I have to throw that out there. Um, it's about who we're connected to. And so I try to make sure I'm connected by some very vibrant people. I don't allow negativity around me. Um, I'm I'm all about um thriving and who's who's actually going to push me and help me hold me accountable for the things I say I really want to have anyway. You know what I'm saying? So those are some things that I put in place, uh, whether it's um, best friends, best sisters, best cousins, <laughs> you name it. You know, I try to put those important people in my life right off the bat. Well, and sometimes, and I'll just share it, that for a while, it was even just like a few weeks when you needed a jump start. we had a marketing coaching relationship where you were literally calling me and I'm like, time to do your homework. Um, and so those kinds of resources are available. Absolutely. Uh, you know, because otherwise the world doesn't get how fabulous, what fabulous things you have to offer. It's Brianna, true. what about, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 I was going to say it's true because because when you talk about that metaphor of gasoline, pouring gasoline on a spark, sometimes Sometimes you can be in your own zone. You you doing your own thing. You don't realize. Hey, did you tweak that one thing? Did you did you mention that one thing? And that's where someone like yourself can come into play, for sure, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Brianna, what about you? Yeah, some yeah. I was just going to add to that and say, you know, one thing that I see, especially with you people that I work with, is that they it's it's a bit of um. Kind of like, I mean, I guess, Deanna, like what, we were, what we were talking about earlier with the, should my voice be heard? It's this level of self-worth and like this worthiness to even bring their spark into the world. So, so yeah, so I'm basically like with everyone I work with, I'm helping them bring their own spark into the world because, you know, they're selling online courses and things like that. So the, I've seen people sell courses on making caramel apples on like goat tending and things like that, these random things that it's their passion and what they're meant to, you know, bring into this world. And I I just see that I just see this hesitation to even share those things. So I mean I guess I guess it is there's just a bit of 
you know, hesitation with should I be, should I even be sharing this? Should I even be saying any of this? I think once you know something, and actually I'm only looking off to the side because I can find this. I just want to pull up because um, you're absolutely adorable on these. So Brianna, speaking of sharing, made a commitment. And again, it's this commitment, like I committed to doing a, <laughs> so we've got Brianna, she's got look at her great things. You want to stay in webinar pitch, how to start building momentum. They're just absolutely positively adorable. And they're that like three ways to do this. But what I love is just as I made a commitment to doing this show for every, every Wednesday for a year, and then hopefully even beyond. But I think you just launched a commitment to doing a video. Are you doing them? How often? But I know there was some sort of challenge that you did to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So they're weekly. So every week and actually I broke my, I broke my streak in December, at least the last two weeks of December, because the holidays just got, they just got too crazy. So I had to, <laughs> I just, just take a step back and say, okay, I got to know when I, when I just can't <laughs> do it. But yeah, it's, they're weekly videos. I have them. I have actually like, you know, right now, like 10, like kind of filmed in the backlog right now. So I just film more and just add more and more to the backlog so that I always have content that I can produce so I can, you know, change what was going up that week. But yeah, weekly videos, that is the commitment and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and Tony, you've started, are yours weekly now as well? Tony's also getting into video because mm -hmm. of her messages in the, uh, in the Facebook group for the Invest Southwest Art Project. Mm -hmm. You're also doing which is so wonderful. So Tony, like she just glows when she talks. Um, so I love that you're doing video. You know what? I'm finding that to um, to connect. That's one one of the one of the things I decided to do was to do a weekly or biweekly um, accountability. I call it my accountability video, so that people can know what's actually happening in you know with the artist re artist residency. And so whether I meet with people or not, or, you know, whatever we produce that week, I want to be able to share that. Yeah. That's wonderful. And speaking of sharing, Brianna, your puppies are talking. So I feel like Brianna has two puppies. Oh, oh my gosh. They have been talking <laughs> all morning. They were talking at the beginning of when the show started. <laughs> they were not talking. I have a room in my lap now. Oh my God, they're so cute. <laughs> and so this is tough. I'm just like, y'all, they know when I'm on the <laughs> oh, I love them. They're adorable. Um, so I love if you're listening live, please feel free to share as well. But it sounds like what, what we're all saying, and, and it was the idea of the spark, but again, and it sounds like this more, it almost feels like this is, <laughs> Hi, thank you for coming on my show. Let me just lie on the couch for my for my therapy of um of that feeling of just when the world is so big, when the world is so big, and we've had such a hard year, and then and then you know other people are not, or other people are having worse challenges. You're doing okay, and it's the idea of that it's okay to continue. I mean, you kind of it sounds silly to say you have to keep running your business, you have to keep doing what you're doing because life is still pushing forward. And so it's these strategies to stay on track and to not let those voices in your head tell you it's not important. Um, I know deadlines probably help with that. Tony, you've got some big deadlines coming up with the big Austin art project. Yes, yes. In fact, January 31st is our first milestone. We're engaging, we're putting it all on paper, our ideas. And we want to make sure that uh, people are heard. You know, we don't want to just have programs for the sake of programs. We want to make sure that they're actually impacting people. And so January 31st is our first milestone. So, yes, deadlines push you. <laughs> mm -hmm. they, they absolutely push you. So, yeah. Well, I love the idea, too, of how you can create something from nothing. Because one of the things we're doing, I mentioned that I'm working with Tony on this project, supporting her on this project, is on January 26th, we're just doing a meet the artist. Like sometimes you can do things that are so easy. All you have to do is set up a Zoom meeting. Tony will be there. You're bright and brilliant anyway. And now it's something as we're meeting with community that we can say, oh, just come and meet the artists on the 26th. So it's things like that that really can motivate you and move you forward. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. it, it, it actually pushes you. It helps um, put, put, a, put a fire under you, you know, if, I'm, if, you, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah. 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 No, I love all the spark analogies because yeah. it's so it's so true. So. 
Exactly. And it's always so important to keep doing those things as well. So you get even more comfortable, you know, doing it and you can do bigger things and better things and, you know, keep pushing yourself forward. Mm -hmm. I think you're right on that. All of this is a practice. Once you get used to it, you just, yeah, you just get used to it. I was looking at, it's so funny. I was watching these videos. Um, I used to do marketing for Jewish child and family services. And so probably eight years ago, I had just taken a, you know, a camera, not even a cell phone, but an actual camera filmed a um, setup video of uh, their early childhood center, like making Play-Doh or doing things. We had, we just had other employees come in with their kids and we staged it. One of those videos has like 151,000 views on it now. And it was literally like, yeah, it's terrible. I'm just going to shoot and point and hope everyone says what they need to. No editing. But it's just getting practice and really just putting stuff out there and not being afraid to put stuff out there, I think. And oh, I'm sorry. And I was going to say in, in authenticity as well. Because when you're authentic, when you're passionate about what you're doing, that's just going to shine and, and go over the quote mistakes or or any you know errors that are made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so true, Brianna. You were going to say something as well. No, I was just I was just going to basically say the same thing. I was just agreeing with everything you were saying. I mean, I think um, hold on, the dogs got to eat real quick. Um, <laughs> He'll, he'll go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I just, I don't know. I, I'm not used to them yet. <laughs> it's, it's always been like five months. I'm not, I'm not used to them. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it's, it's dinner time right now. So my husband's uh, taking care, taking care of that. <laughs> um, well, I'm going to let Tony, I know you have a hard cut off at 1030, Brianna, if you'll stay for a second. Yeah. Um, so Tony, tell us just one more time. So you're you've been awarded this contract to be the artist in residence in the Austin neighborhood of Chicago. The vision is to be as in, as widely inclusive as possible. You would like everyone to meet and join. How else would you like? What else would you like to tell people in terms of getting involved in this project? You know what? I want to tell people that uh, two years from now we want to look and see. Uh, an Austin community that you've got programs, you've got public art, you've got, and we've got that because we were all connected working on one thing. And so I want to invite people and encourage people to just get involved. Let us know your ideas. What's your dream for Austin? Because we want to help you uh, get to that next point and uh, join a Facebook group. Uh, mm -hmm. Contact me, invest in Austin at TonyRupert.com. We'd love to know and hear from you. Yeah. Fantastic. Tony, thanks so much. And good luck with the project. I know it's fabulous. Thank so, you good so to much, see you. Brianna. Thanks. Thank you so much. Okay, Take sure. care. All right. Bye-bye. All right. So invest in Austin. That is, uh, we have a deadline of January 31st to have the outreach plan. So really looking for people mm -hmm. to get involved as quickly as possible for then. And then she'll actually be creating the proposal for the public art for Austin. And hopefully with all the support and a big project, We'll find out in September if it's actually awarded. So, uh, so big news for her. Yes. Ooh, that is, that is tense. That is, I, I really do hope that everything works out for, you know, for the project that she's working on because it is so important. So, you know, mm -hmm. I know that we'll, you know, we talk about, you know, her sometimes during our calls. So I know mm -hmm. you updated and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Well, what's cool though, too, is again, how do you, I think sometimes this goes to the subject of, and we'll just talk for a few more minutes about this, but this idea of how do you get yourself, how do you get out of your own head? You know, you know what you know, but there's a whole world. So how do you create structure to make sure that you're, that you're bringing in the broadest amount of ideas? And so she has her team, she has two young artists also working with them. One of them is a gentleman, his name is Inzo. And he's actually really well known. He does uh, he does um, cover art for a lot of famous musicians right now. I think he did one for Cardi B. So he's a young man who's on this team. We have two artists. We have another uh, woman who's been involved in community outreach uh, through hospitals and through healthcare. So she's got a lot of experience there. And so that was not required. That was Tony's approach. Other mm -hmm. artists could just apply on their own. She said, no, I want this team that I can have so that um, she wasn't missing out on ideas and that she had strategy, art, 
outreach, like all the different components, mm -hmm. along with her ability as a community mm -hmm. artist. Nice. Um, Nice. Yes. I think, you know, to your question of, you know, just kind of how do you get out of your own way? I really think there's a few things with that. I mean, first it all, for me, like everything starts with mindset. Like how are you talking to yourself and how are you thinking about yourself and your own abilities? If you have some sort of qualifications, then you can share that gift with the world. You know, if you have never, you know, file taxes or gotten yourself out of debt before then don't talk about it don't teach other people to do it because you don't <laughs> have to do it. but if you've gotten training you've gotten experience you've done it for yourself or for others then you do have you just i think that people just need to realize that they do have mm -hmm. what it takes to share their gift with the world and teach others you know how they do it or how to do it themselves or what have you and i think it also you know comes down as well to to actually doing the thing as hard mm -hmm. as it is. I mean, like, I know for me, I struggle mightily. I mean, even with these videos, mm -hmm. I the first video that I filmed for this channel was last February. So February in 2020 is when I shot the first video. Oh, interesting. And mm -hmm. I did not post it until like November. And mm -hmm. so I sat on those videos for all of those months. I mean, I, I even film some more, but I could not bring myself to actually post it. And I think that is all about how you're talking to yourself and how you're telling yourself, oh, I'm not qualified to do this. I can't mm -hmm. teach you how to do this. People aren't going to listen to what I have to say. And so you just really have to shift that kind of mindset and then just do the thing. And once you do it, it gets a little bit easier. And then you do it again and it gets a little bit easier too. And if it is too hard, you know, if you really are just like stuck in your own way and you're having trouble just moving forward, I think one of the most game changing things that I have experienced mm -hmm. and that others experience too is do an easier step. So, you know, what's mm -hmm. easier than posting a video? Well, maybe it's showing it to somebody. Maybe it's like doing a Facebook Live. Maybe that's going to be more jarring for mm -hmm. you. So you, don't yeah. do that. you know, maybe it's you know, just writing the script. Maybe it's, you know, doing this or that, but what is a step easier? Maybe it's even just posting on social media mm -hmm. your thoughts about what the video topic is. So you know that people actually are listening to you. So sure. this idea of like taking it on a scale and I've actually like done this in like other, you know, classes and things like that, like listing out all the things and Deanna, we will be talking about this tomorrow, but listing out. <laughs> <laughs> looking out things that freak you out and like on a scale of like one to 10, how much does it freak you out? Put them in order. So like, you know, maybe it's, you know, Deanna, like we were talking about, like post, mm -hmm. posting on, posting on Twitter regularly. And so now right, what we talked about was uh, because it's that whole idea of, I see all these people who are influencers who are just mm -hmm. saying you should do it this way. And I so yeah. strongly in my heart believe it's not my right to tell someone else how to do something, especially as an interculturalist, you know, as an interculturalist, mm -hmm. we are trained to believe that there's so many different approaches to doing everything. And yet as people grow their following, it's, there's so much that has to do with, well, this is how you do it. So yeah. we talked about, every day just giving like one thing that's like this is just a good business insight mm -hmm. and maybe i phrase it that way instead of you mm -hmm. should do it this way it's like yeah. here's an approach that really works what do you do exactly. and just so you know so so i started this yesterday mm -hmm. i'm saying this on film now for mm -hmm. brianna my commitment was to do one a day i mm -hmm. actually got like responses and conversation based oh. on my first one. Yes. See? So, exactly. see, so, so much for the, who cares? Yeah, um, exactly. You just kind of, you know, just release yourself from people's mm -hmm. judgments or the outcome or their responses. And you just like, you just say, Hey, I'm going to do it. And here it goes. Mm -hmm. I was actually attending somebody's Facebook live. It was just a few, it was, it was last week. And mm -hmm. they were talking about if something really scares you, that they're a big they're a big fan of just doing it and running. So mm -hmm. like, posting and then like going to like cook somewhere, something or like get some gas or something like that. Like, like do it and run. Like, don't look mm -hmm. at it. That's <laughs> that, so funny. That way. I had written, it was, I, I think it was a couple of years ago during breast cancer awareness month. I finally wrote about having had breast cancer, which was now like five years ago. But one of the phrases I said is what scares you dares you. Like as soon as I'm scared about something, mm -hmm. then it's then it means I I need to do it. In mm -hmm. fact, this weekend I'm doing uh uh 
it's a it's a two day all day both days training. Uh, I also teach you know that I also teach fitness and I'm getting trained in Les Mills. It's called CX Works. It's a really hardcore strength thing, and I know I'm going to be like on Advil and capsaicin Sunday night. But as soon as I was like, oh, I don't think I can do it. I'm like, well, as soon as that, I'm mm -hmm. answering my own question. As soon as that thought comes to my head, as soon as I say, I don't think you can do it, then that is like, oh, well, now you have to, you know, now yeah. you have to do it mm -hmm. for sure. Exactly. And it's just about, you know, challenging, challenging yourself in that way. And I think that if you do make that kind of commitment to challenge yourself, even when it comes to, you know, committing to the show, when it comes to, you know, yeah. sharing your voice on Twitter, things like that. One, it becomes easier mm -hmm. to become more confident. And I know mm -hmm. that even just with this show week after week, I have seen you just become like more in tune with, you know, whatever, what you're talking about, mm -hmm. like more confident with, you know, just the conversation and just the fact that you, you are the host, like this is your voice and, your <laughs> platform, and like you are embodying that so much more. And it's, it's only been a few months now, you know, so yeah. mm -hmm. it. I just think that if you do it and you do it again and again and again, it just becomes easier and you get more confident and you're so evidence of that. Oh, well, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. So I know we have an inauguration to get to, um, some fun stuff too, though. Like next, uh, I'm really excited. Actually next Wednesday, we have two comedians. We have Aaron Freeman and Karen Bergreen. Um, the idea of comedy as your superpower. Cause I figure if you can't laugh now, like, like we need laughter more than anything. Uh, we have someone focusing on, on customer service. And then I have the self-proclaimed mayor of Uranus, Missouri, which if you haven't heard of Uranus, well, you got bigger issues. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> sorry, that's not me. It's them. It's Uranus, Missouri. It's a tourist destination. <laughs> um, but we have some really fun variety guests. And then we're hoping, and I'll wear my Billy Porter shirt again, um, that Lucky Church will join us again when he's feeling better. We're hoping to have him back in uh, in a few weeks when he's back uh, uh, back to full strength. So. Brianna, thank you so much, not only for being on the show, but um, for everything that you do. You are fabulous. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> thank you so much. Sure thing. See you next time.